What's up guys, I'm EJ, I'm joined by Kendall, and thank you all for checking out this new video we're doing on the NBA Draft. Today we're going to be ranking the top point guards in this NBA Draft for 2021. Kendall, as we talked about right before we recorded, this is kind of an interesting class because there are several players who some may consider point guards, others may consider two guards, and there are a lot of combo guards. So when it comes to this list, you may hear guys that you're waiting to hear, but you won't hear because maybe we think of them in a different position. So that kind of is going to make this ranking interesting. I think there will be an uh, interesting discussion, not just with the players we list, but the guys we consider point guards and who aren't point guards. So this should be a, a definitely an interesting conversation as we go through this position. Yeah, I mean, there's even some guys that some may consider point guards that I consider a three, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, there are some interesting prospects in this list. Um, nonetheless, I feel like I have five players that I consider to be top 20 players in this draft. Um, it's, in my opinion, the deepest, the strongest position in this or strongest position in this draft class, uh, despite there being some guys that, you know, are sort of in between. Um, you know, I, I think I, I was pretty, I think I may, I may be more strict than others in terms of the definition of a point guard in this, in this NBA. Um, but with that being said, I think it's still ranks as the deepest and strongest position in this draft class so um yeah i'm excited to 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 share my top five i don't know about you ej i am too and i do agree that um this is probably i I think backcourt to me is the deepest because again there are a lot of players who are going to be combo guards guys who will be handling the ball just if you're looking for a a young little guard this is the this is the draft for you because there are guys i think literally that will be drafted early in second round that are would be first round picks in many other drafts. So this is definitely a talented class. I'm excited to talk about these guys. So um, I'll go first with my list of guys here. So starting at number five, and this is tough because I, there are a lot of guards I like, man. But um, and I haven't necessarily spoken about my love so much for this guy, but he did make my top five. I'm going with Sharif Cooper, a uh, point guard out of Auburn, freshman. Um, he definitely undersized, though. Whatever happened with the draft combine <laughs> suggests maybe he isn't. But to me, he definitely seems a little undersized. Um, can be a little turnover prone. But I think, I'll tell you what, I think that there are players, every now and then you'll see a playoff run, and a player in the NBA makes guys money in the draft. I think Trey Young is making Shreve Cooper a lot of money in this draft. No way am I saying Shreve Cooper is a shooter Trey Young is. But as we, what we've learned, I think a lot of people maybe didn't watch Hoss a lot this season, is what we, what a lot of people don't understand about Trey Young's game. Yes, he may have came with the reputation as this crazy shooter who can shoot from 40 feet out, and yes, he can do that. But what makes him almost more deadly is his passing ability, um, his ability in the pick and roll, to manipulate it, to get to the free throw line. Cooper has pretty much all those skills. I mean, it, and I know that sounds crazy to some people because Trey Young is an all-star and is just taking over the playoffs. But to me, he's probably the best pick and roll, kind of pick you apart guard. Not necessarily always just scoring, just overall in terms of how dangerous he is as a scorer and a passer. Cooper is pretty much right there. I mean, to be that young and be that advanced in his game is just phenomenal. Um, when the guy gets in the open floor, he's a highlight reel waiting to happen. Truly a, uh, a extremely gifted passer. Um, he may be slender or, or tiny, rather, but he's not slender. He's a strong body, so he's good at finishing through contact. And, again, just his – his. I mean, he might be the best live ball dribbler – excuse me, live ball passer uh, in this draft. And when, when you consider just how much of this game is spaced out and how much of it is played in transition, I just have a feeling that he's going to be a guy who, who had, carves out a good career in the NBA. How great he becomes will rely heavily on just whether or not he can get a consistent jump shot. And I can't tell you if that's going to happen or not, but I think he's starting off uh, at a really good place because so much of the rest of his game is so hard to handle. And to me, even when I look at his sabermetric numbers and advanced statistics, uh, 70 percentile pick and roll offense, that's with that jump shot that you know we saw teams were going under and he struggled at times. Still, he ranked that high in pick and roll offense. He was in 77th percentile when it came to hitting the roll man on the pick and roll. So, uh, you know, he's got to cut the turnovers down, but a truly, truly talented ball handler and, 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 a, and a gifted passer. So he's going to come in at number five for me. Number four, again, tricky, tough, but I'm going to go with Trey Mann from Florida. And Trey Mann, you know, we stay in the kind of in that pick-and-roll lane. Uh, he may be the best pick-and-roll guy when it comes to getting his shot. 
Uh, he finished in like the 90, 92nd percentile in overall pick and roll offense um, at, at a, a point point zero six nine p- points possession. So uh, extremely adept in the pick and roll. Excellent off the dribble. His, his off the dribble jump shot was uh, at the 90th percentile when it came to um, the, the advanced statistics. And that's on 107 possessions. So that's not, you know, 10 times he's the pick and pull up jump shots. I mean, he t- a lot of his jump shots are off the dribble. And in fact, I think that he actually needs to continue to improve on being come more comfortable in the catch and shoot. Uh, but the catch and shoot numbers themselves also respectable. But I think he can get that a little better. Just really good at reading the pick and roll. And, and he knows when to give the ball up as well. Uh, I've just been very impressed with Trey Mann. All the film I've watched. The stats uh, check out as well. Uh, great size for the position as well at 6'5". Really, uh, really good player. And I think that he'll also be a guard that will carve his way out of the league. Because he kind of has a modern game. When I, when I wrote my notes for scouting him, I said this guy, to me, is the modern NBA point guard. Um, the you know Definitely high usage, but... Um, someone who can kind of hurt you in all facets of the game when he gets in that pick and roll action. And that's what every team is doing in the NBA. So he'll get playing those opportunities. Not going to blow by you per se. Um, not the greatest athlete, but still crafty enough to get his shot off. So he comes in at number four, number three, man, this was tough Kendall because I really? almost made this guy number two, but uh, I, I went with Davion Mitchell at three. I almost talked myself into putting him ahead of Suggs. Uh, it's 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 and I guess that gives away who's number one. But <laughs> Mitchell's defense, I don't I I can't put into words just to me how ridiculous it is. And sometimes when it comes to players guarding perimeter players, I think sometimes we we can overrate defense honestly because the NBA these guys are so good on the perimeter and the rules are so tilted to the offense. I think the amount of guys who are like a, a true like plus plus defensively. Their number is, is very small. You know, you could be a good defender, but a great offensive player is still going to cut you up in this NBA. I mean, Paul George is a great defensive player, and he can't handle Luka Doncic. You know, some guy, like, like, like it is not against Paul George. We know he's a great defender, but just the game, the offensive players right now, they're so advanced. Again, the rules, the referees, the way they call these guys, it's impossible. But Mitchell, to me, is in that, like, 1% level where, no, I think whoever he's guarding is in for a long night. Um... People legitimately look terrified to dribble, dribble against this guy, and I understood it. He has extremely quick feet, um, pit bull mentality. And what I loved about him was when I got to see him talk at the NBA Draft Combine, he was shout out to Mike Schmitz, who was breaking down film. I saw him talking about breaking down a play between Cade Cunningham, and it wasn't just, yeah, I locked him up and we got the stop. It was, oh, I looked on film, and I know that he likes to go left on this situation, and I cut off his left hand because I knew what kind of move he was going to go to. Like, it's not just he's really fast and aggressive. This guy, his mind is also elite when it comes to on-the-ball defense. And, again, as we've seen the playoffs going to the flip side, I think that Trey Young has made Davion Mitchell money. Because, you see, if you don't got a guy to stop a guy who's that good, out in the perimeter who can just get all over the place. You don't got a guy to just follow that guy for 40 minutes. You're going to be in for a long series. And um, Davion Mitchell, to me, is the kind of guy, as a Knicks fan, I know I was going to wear a Knicks shirt. I watched him on film. I'm like, man, if they got – Knicks had that guy in that series, might have been different. That, that's truly how I feel because of his defense. But even getting away from the defense, he's a very good offensive player. Um People will talk about his speed and his ability to get to the basket, and it's understandable because I think he's the fastest guy in the draft. But he's also an excellent shooter. He was in the 93rd percentile in uh, spot-up jump shots and points per possession. Uh, so just a, a, a great shooter. He can shoot off the dribble. He can shoot on the catch-and-shoot. He was very uh, comfortable in the catch-and-shoot because Jared Butler also got a lot of touches uh, playing on the ball. And then, again, the transition offense. He was an 86th percentile there. He's just a blur. Um, really good at changing speeds as well. He got it, you know, I think he can probably, you know, he had a lot of assists, but I think sometimes he got a little sloppy with the ball. He's got to cut down on the turnovers. Um, the age to me is why maybe I couldn't move him higher, but I think David Mitchell is just a stud. Um, I, I think that he's going to be a really good NBA player. And at, at worst, to me, he's a, a, a top-notch defensive player. So number two, that goes with me with Jalen Suggs here. So Suggs comes in at number two. Um, we know what kind of... Uh, athlete he is we know how great he is at getting uh to the basket it seems like when he puts his head down and just goes to the rim he just seems unstoppable 
he's physically strong, and I just feel like to me he still has a uh, he still has a plenty of maturation to get to in terms of his physical body. There are times where he'll try to do these crazy up and under kind of layups. He may miss some of them, but like to me, it's not that he's not good. It's just um he's not probably doesn't have the strength to do that kind of finish. But maybe in two or three years, that that you know reverse up and under through three guys finish that maybe he missed. I think he will be making that in three years when he just works his body out and continues to mature as a player. Um, but again, I talk about Davion Mitchell, the mind defensively, and Jalen Suggs is also a really good defender. But to me, Jalen Suggs is mind offensively. I, I've seen plenty of his Gonzaga teammates, especially Corey Kispert during the track process, talk about how he just never played with a player who thinks the game the way Jalen Suggs does. And to, to talk about that by a guy who's 19 years old, going to be 20 on draft night, uh, just says a lot about him. He's really good in the pick and roll in terms of finding the right man. Uh, Gonzaga had a great offense, but the fact that, you know, few felt comfortable putting him at the head as a freshman says a lot to me, and they were <laughs> very successful with him uh, running the show. But because they had other guards also, very comfortable playing off the ball as well. And I think the jump shot, which was pretty solid, I think he had some ways to go there, but there's a definitely a, a, a solid floor for him to become a much better shooter. Suggs definitely has star potential. Um and again, the the age is it's really what what excites you for a guy to be that have those kind of intangibles, uh, that kind of clutch ability, and 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 to be that uh, high basketball IQ of a player, just says the world about him as as a guy. To me, he's definitely a top five pick in this draft. And number one, that leads me to to, to Kate Cunningham, um, the the uh, the physical uh, measurements, the physical uh, profile is is at elite as it comes as a point guard. The guy is six foot eight, 220 pounds. I mean, that's just like, you, you're, that's a career, that's a my player on NBA 2K. That's not, <laughs> a, that you know, those guys don't grow on trees. So not only do you have the physical profile, but then again, similar to Suggs, uh, extremely high basketball IQ. I, when I watched uh, Cunningham play a lot, it just it was very rare I ever saw him just make a terrible read or just not see where to make the right pass or when to shoot. He may have missed shots. He may have, he, he almost rarely made bad passes. I mean, he's such an accurate passer. But maybe every now and then he makes an accurate pass. But rarely do you see a lot of plays or where a defender like, makes a great play. Yeah, oh yeah, oh right. Or Davion Mitchell in a one-on-one situation, you know what, he's Davion Mitchell. It's going to be tough for anybody to go against him in a late shot clock situation. But besides those plays, it just seemed like Suggs always makes the right – I mean, excuse me, Cunningham always makes the right play. It may not always work. And I think those assist numbers that we saw, which were kind of pedestrian, I think some of that had to do with his teammates missing open shots or dropping the ball. Like, if you watch a lot of that film, you'll, you'll see plenty of that. Um, it, Cunningham, to me, is just uh, – he's a special player. Uh, I, I do feel like his future is definitely at point guard. He's a guy that needs to have the ball in his hands and, and to be orchestrating the offense. And what I love about him, his ability in transition to skip the ball ahead. And just keep the ball moving. Um, to me, it's just astonishing that he was that good as a floor general kind of guy. And it's like he averaged, he's like, it was like a quiet 20 points he averaged this year. Like it's, it's like really remarkable that he averaged 20 points considering, again, when you watch a lot of his game, I feel like the best part of the game is still the way he just moves the offense and orchestrates the offense. And I think to me, what makes him so special, because I think there is some question mark, is he this this guy as a scorer you know he's not that explosive um it does he have a ceiling there the isolation scoring on the college level was elite let's get let's keep it a buck 87 percentile in isolation scoring in college uh a point point one nine one one nine points possession on uh isolation situations so uh, we can talk about is he a scorer i mean when he was one-on-one against a guy they couldn't stop him from scoring and also by the way underrated defensive player you mentioned it earlier in one of our other videos, um, excellent on that side of the ball. He's so good offensively that we don't even talk about his defense. But he's an excellent defensive player as well. A lot of these young guards in this draft are really good defensively. But um, that's my top five. There are a couple guys out there in the mix. I didn't put um, Bones Highland, uh, yeah, who's Butler. Um, those, those guys I, I have as two guards um, to me. They're, they're, when I think of a combo guard, to me that thinks, to me that reads more two guard. So that's why those guys aren't there. Uh Butler definitely had a case to be five over Cooper if that if I did put him at a point guard. Um, but five for just point guards, it's like it's close between Desumu and um, and McBride. Uh, if you really if you really maybe pin me down say like who's six, I would probably go with 
Desumu. Just the physical frame. I I'll give him the edge because of the physical frame. Uh, McBride may be more. McBride's more polished, but you can't Who teach. You, you can't teach six. You can't teach six six. You know, two hundred yeah. pounds with his athleticism, his speed. Like you can't teach that kind of stuff. So um, so that, so I, I would probably go to Sumo six uh, in that in that case. All right. Um, so I guess I'll start at number five. Um, I'm going with your guy, the guy, a guy you just mentioned, uh, Jared Butler, uh, guard out of okay. Baylor. Um, who look, I mean, Jared Butler is a very, you know, he's a very sort of, I don't think he's a super high ceiling prospect, but I think he's a very high floor prospect. And look, also obviously caveat, obviously dealing with whatever issues he's dealing with medically, those all have to be cleared, obviously. Yeah, hopefully, um, he, hopefully, hopefully it does. Cause we want to, yeah, hopefully, the yeah, hopefully, hopefully it does. It doesn't seem like he's, he's. He's panicking right now. When you looked at it, when you, you know you watch him during the combine, but but yeah, hopefully that all gets cleared out. But I mean, as a as a as a basketball player, Jared Butler, um, you know, he's the consummate sort of leader um, offensively. He is he's the kind of guard that I feel like we saw last year have a lot of success in their rookie seasons. Guys like Quickly and Peyton Pritchard, um, you know, Malachi Flynn in Toronto, like guys that. Are a little bit more veteran, a little bit more seasoned, um, and mature and polished offensively. Uh, that will end up having, uh, you know, end up ended up having really, really uh, impressive rookie seasons. I feel like Jared Butler is a guy in this year's draft that, um, given he's, he, you know, I know he's not the super athlete. He's not, um, you know, Sharif Cooper with the passes or Trey Young with the passes. But he's a, you know, we focus on sometimes what he can't do, but what he can do is can really shoot the basketball. Um, he can, he has a really, really adept, he's really, really, really adept at the floater game. Um, he can get to the basket um, and he defends, you know, like that's really all you want from a, from a second unit change of face kind of point guard. I don't know if Jared Butler will ever be, um, uh, you know, he's never going to be a superstar point guard. I mean, at least I don't know. I don't, I doesn't, he doesn't project to be that, but um, you're talking about a guy that will, you know, early on in his NBA career, make waves. I think Jared Butler is going to have a really, really nice NBA career. Um, and you know, it's 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 really it really just comes down to his upside is why he's not hired to me. I think if you're talking about if you're asking me who's who's the best point guard next season, he would be higher on this list. Um, but some of the other guys above him, I think, have higher upsides. Uh, at number four, I we have this exact same number four. I'm going with Trey Mann. Uh, point guard out of Florida. Um, I agree with everything you said, EJ, about um, he, him being the modern day NBA point guard. I mean, what I, what I, the thing that impresses me the most about Trey Mann and why he's in this spot from his, from his overall scouting profile is to me he's the he's the best shooting prospect at the point guard position, and that's a valuable, it's a valuable title to hold in, in any draft. And nowadays, like you said, the modern NBA point guard, like you want your point guard to be a high level shooter and he can shoot catch and shoot. He can he can shoot with the ball, you know, off the dribble. Um, you know, he obviously is very, very uh, effective in the pick and roll action. Um, he has to get better, I think, as a as a as a playmaker. But um, I think really he's he's the kind of point guard where you're going to be relying on his scoring ability. And his scoring ability is going to, you would hope, um, draw the defense almost in a way, it, almost similar to how D'Angelo Russell, you know, operates, where D'Angelo Russell is a lot of pick and roll. Uh, D'Angelo Russell is a much better passer at Ohio State than Trey Mann, but um, being a very, you know, a high volume pick and roll kind of point guard, um, you know, I think that they have those sort of similarities. And, you know, I mean, look, the range that Trey Mann has, the the size I think that's what separates Trey Mann you know because some may ask look he wasn't one and done he had to come back for a sophomore season he wasn't really viewed as a first round pick coming out of high school although he was a uh an all-american coming out of high school but I think the difference is coming out of high school he was like 6'2 you know you know I think there was some questions about all right how skilled is Trey Mann for him to not be that athletic and not be that big but now that he's 6'5 I mean, you can't really have those questions really about his physical profile because he's really big. Even though he's not going to be super fast, 
he's going to have the size advantage over a lot of the point guards he's playing against. So, and he, I feel like he knows how to use his size. And that's what is also effective. He's not yeah. a six five guy that plays like he's six one. Yeah, exactly. Because, again, like I said earlier, he's not, again, he, he doesn't have this blazing speed. Um, no. And he's not this, like, uh, he's not even this really bully, but I just think the way he just kind of, he's again, the way I use is crafty. Um, yeah. And, and to me, a guard like him, your your projection is, you know, uh, does his level of craft make up for what he may lack in, like, just and, and the, pure blow-by ability? And the and thing that... Th- there's a lot of traits to suggest that it does with him. Yeah. And the thing that sticks out to me about his offensive game also is his ability to make tough shots. You know, I mean, it's not as if, you know, you want a guy that, that only takes tough shots, but he doesn't only take tough shots. But when he has to, he can make them in the mid range with a guy in his face. Because, again, he's 6'5". He shoots over other point guards and he can shoot from deep. So if you go under on a pick and roll, it's a nightmare. You know, you watch the Oral Roberts game and they try to go under on him. He's shooting from the logo. Now, I know that March Madness logo is very long, so, you know, that's not exactly, uh, you know, half court, but it's still, uh, it was still a very impressive showing for Trey Mann. So, yeah, he's not, he's my number four really high upside prospect to me. Could wind up being one of the better players in this draft when it's all said and done. Uh, number three, I'm um, going with Sharif Cooper, who you had at number, at number uh, five. Um, to me, Sharif Cooper is very, very uh, boomer boss. You know, it, it, you have to acknowledge it. I love Sharif Cooper's game. Um, I see why a lot of people do not like Sharif Cooper uh, as a prospect. You know, you mentioned all a lot of the, the the really great things. I mean, obviously, the the elephant in the room is you know defensively. Um, you know, he's not. I mean, he's going to be the. He's probably the worst. You know, defensive prospect at the point guard position, arguably at any position in this draft. Um, but what to me to me i think when you mentioned the trey young thing like trey young isn't a great defensive player and he's also probably one of the worst defensive players in the league but it doesn't matter because he's so elite offensively that um the hawks you know at the end of the day the hawks are still uh winning able to win games with a guy like trey young uh at point guard i feel like Sharif Cooper, that's really going to be the question for him is um, how dynamic can he be offensively to make up for the the defense that's going to be subpar. And in this NBA where you have to switch and stuff, I mean, ideally you would like to be able to switch. Um, it's not ideal to have a point guard that is, um, you know, allegedly 6'5", but more 6'1". Right, um, yeah. You know, it's not, that's, that's not the best thing. But offensively, I mean, you mentioned it. I mean, to me... He reeks of a smaller Ja Morant. You know, you mentioned the Trey Young aspect to his game. I mean, the ability to pass with either hand, like you said, off a live dribble, off you know, out, off pick and rolls. He the the, the 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 his ability to find lob threats. Um, he strikes me as the point guard, as a type of point guard that'll make a big man a lot of money. You know, like play play a big man with Trey. With, oh, oh with trust Trey me, the one guy. Yeah. JT Thor is one of them. <laughs> he yeah, already Thor he's already made him the, a lot of money in this draft. Yeah, he's one of the he's one of the recipients of that. I look, I know a lot of people like to point to Sharif Cooper and say, look, I know we need him to be great offensively, but he shot thirty nine percent, twenty something percent from three. How can we suggest that this guy's gonna be great offensively? But I think what people are missing with Sharif Cooper is that ideally at the 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 ideal situation for Sharif Cooper is playing on a team that was not Auburn um, and not Auburn in the way that he had to play at Auburn because he obviously did not play the first 10, 15 games of the season because of an NCAA issue. And that team was built through for Sharif Cooper, but he was built around Sharif Cooper and he wasn't there. And that team fell apart at the beginning of the season. He comes in mid, you know, at the, you know, middle of SEC play at the start of SEC play. And, that team is already out of it in terms of the NCAA tournament. At this point, he's just trying to get his draft stock up. Um, he plays terrific, but like he's not he's not on a great team. And I think had he been there from the start, there may have been he may have been better, or the, and the team would have been better. And I think we would saw him be a little bit more competitive. But I feel like he played a lot of that season, you know, at half speed. You know, I feel like there is another gear to Shreve Cooper's game that we haven't even seen because he was playing a lot of meaningless games, trying not to get hurt. 
trying just to show off for scouts. But I also have seen, have seen Shreve Cooper at McEachern, you know, in high school, you know, like not lose a game for, for like seasons on end. So it's not like he's a losing player. I think you can win with Shreve Cooper as your best, or maybe as your best player in the NBA, obviously, but you can win with Shreve Cooper as your point guard. It's just, you know, I think it was a bad situation. But if you put Shreve Cooper on uh, a different basketball team, a better basketball team, uh, I think we may be looking the narrative around his draft process may be a little different because I think the stats would have wound up being being a little different. And just, um, quick, and just real quickly on Cooper as well, when you mentioned the struggles he had on defense, I think what I also was concerned with was it wasn't just some of it was he's a little guy, but some of it also was was bad effort and and constantly being in a bad defensive position, just not knowing where he's supposed to be in a rotation, not cutting off a guy to you know put or pushing a guy in the right direction. And that, to me, is some of the things that, you know, as a young player, maybe you, you say, okay, great coach, we can get some of that out of him. But those, some of that stuff is a little alarming because, you, know, you know, we know Auburn is a, a well-coached program there. So the fact that he just was so inept on that end it is concerning. And why, yeah. to me, I couldn't put him higher than five. Yeah. Um, number two for me, uh, I agree, is Jalen Suggs. Um, I think – I I think that Jalen Suggs is closer to two than he is closer to one than he is to three in this draft. Um, you seem to think that he may be closer to three than he is to one. Um, I do, but okay, but and I'm the and I'm the Gonzaga guy, but I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know that's ironic. You were higher on Wiseman than I was last year, so isn't that funny? But um, but yeah, no, I mean Jalen Suggs is a I, to me, you know. I think he's a transcendent point guard prospect. Um, you know, if he would have been in last year's draft, I would have had him as my number one prospect in, in last year's draft. I think he, and that wasn't a great draft, so it's not, you know, anything to write home about. But, um, you know, I think that Suggs, what he gives you on both ends of the court is um, is really tremendous. Obviously, um, I think that really... Let me circle it back because I think that the the big question when it comes to Jalen Suggs as a prospect is is he a can he be the engine of an NBA team offensively uh, and overall or is he more of a connective tissue to a basketball team because you look at a guy like Tyree Talibur in last year um, I consistently made the case that I thought he was way more of a connective tissue kind of player and not a not the guy who you can drop on any team and he's gonna you know be like John Morant or or Trey Young and, and he ended up in Sacramento and he was great but it wasn't he wasn't the engine of the team it was it's still the Aaron Fox he's the connective tissue that makes things work and I think some people view Jalen Suggs in that same light like a Tyree Talbert or like a Drew Holiday and I think that Jalen Suggs has the ability to do both. I think Jalen Suggs can be the engine of an off an offense. I think the reason why people have those questions about Jalen Suggs is he went to Gonzaga, and we really he didn't have to. He was the he was more of a connective tissue piece on that team. They didn't really need an engine because they had eight or nine engines on one team. You know, I mean, he didn't have to go out there and get twenty a night. He didn't go out there. He didn't have to even he didn't even have to go out there and get ten assists a night. He just had to go out there and play great defense, make plays, um, and he was obviously going to be able to get his on that team with a lot of open shots and a lot of, you know, fast breaks and turnovers and pick sixes. Yeah, and Gonzaga plays a lot of system ball. It's not Absolutely. a lot of freestyling. It's not a Absolutely. lot of okay, you just get it and go one on one. They haven't done. It's a any, very, it's they, a beautiful offense. It's but, a beautiful offense to watch, but it's very systematic. It they haven't run, you no. Know, Rec, no, uh, freestyle kind of stuff since Adam Morrison was there. Like, to me, that was the last guy I think of where, yeah, we kind of they just gave him the ball and was just finding a way to score. Either with, are you with, saying that Mark Few doesn't let his point guards rock out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 you know, they've had some great point guards, but I do feel like a lot of it is running his system. And right. for good reason. They win a million games a year running yeah. that system. And it's, to me, like, I think if Suggs would have went to – Let's say his hometown, Minnesota Golden Gophers, like, you know, I mean, they had a good guard there, Marcus Carr, but he still would have, I think we would have seen a Jalen Suggs that is still very good and is still considered a top three, three or four prospect in this draft, but it's in a different, it's in a different light. It's in a different situation, a more akin to what Sharif Cooper was doing. Now, I don't think 
similar. I don't think he is. I don't think he can do what Shree Cooper or what Trey Young does. You know, I think he is. But what he makes up for in not being able to, you know, completely carry a team and, you know, his usage can't be as high as those guys. What he makes up for where he makes up for it is on the defensive end where those guys lack defensively. He is going to be one of the best defensive point guards in the league um, very early on in his career once he figures it out. Um, the athleticism, the basketball intelligence. I mean, you mentioned, you know, his mind offensively and defensively. Um, I think a lot of that translates from his football experience. You know, he when you're a quarterback, you know, there, you know, obviously you can't be a low IQ quarterback. Um, you know, there there is a lot that has to go into that. And he was and not just he wasn't like he was. Yeah, I was just a quarterback, but he was. A, an elite high school quarterback that could have played division high division one college football. Um, and, and it really translates on both ends of the floor. Um, and what, what really also impresses me about Jalen Suggs is based off his football background is his toughness. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's ultra competitive, ultra tough, uh, doesn't seem like a guy that's going to fail. So he's my number two point guard, um, but he's not far behind the number one guy. But the number one guy is Kay Cunningham. Kay Cunningham, you mentioned, uh, you know, another transcendent point guard prospect, even more transcendent than Jalen Suggs. Uh, the size is incredible. The passing ability is incredible. Um, the basketball IQ is the highest I've seen since Luka Doncic. And before that, LeBron. You know, like there aren't many prospects that you see with his, with very, his basketball very, IQ. Very high praise there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I can't really... I don't know. I mean, who else are we, are we putting yeah, in that I category? Mean, I, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to say that I disagree yeah. per se, but I'm just saying to say that's yeah. very high praise. It's just, it you has know, to be and, acknowledged. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's what makes K. Cunningham so special. He's, you know, he's not the most athletic guy in this class. He's not necessarily the best shooter, uh, although you, I think you gave him his due as a shot maker. You know, he's not... He's not a uh, Ben Simmons, <laughs> you know. I hate to say it, but he's, you know, he is a very, very capable shot maker. Yeah. Um, in isolation, you know, in the pick and roll, you can't necessarily just go under him. Um, you know, I to me, there are very few weaknesses really to point out. He's, he's an extremely high floor prospect. It's just really, I think the question with Cunningham is going to wind up being, you know, is he? It's almost similar to Suggs. You know, is he a guy that can, you know. Be, a, be your 1A, or is he more of a, uh, you know, a, a B, a 1B, 1C kind of player? And right. um, that's hard to answer. It's hard to answer for any prospect, um, especially one that isn't super athletic and isn't a great shooter. But, you know, it's hard. For, it's also hard for me to say he's not a great shooter when he, you know, the percentages are very good. Um, and I mean, to me, the only thing with sucks to me that I, I can even think Cunningham. about. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, Cunningham. I keep getting those mixed up. Um, yeah. is, is, is to me, just the, the lack of, like, again, this crazy athleticism and speed. But, right. again, when you're 6'8", and you're yes. playing point, and some of that stuff it's doesn't what people really... confused about Luka Doncic. Right, um, yeah. It, it's, it's, yeah. It's, the, the taller you are, the less that kind of thing matters. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it's not insignificant completely, but it also yeah. depends on what kind of, where I what's, think... what's your style of play. I mean, again, Luka Doncic essentially plays point guard, uh, so it's not like you're going to be chasing around. You know, you're not going to be chasing him around with another six, seven, six, eight guy. You can try, but just you know, tough sledding. A lot of times yeah. you're going to get small guys who can't deal with his strength. And yeah. to me, Cunningham has a lot of similarity to Luca's game, and that's why you've seen that comparison a lot. Yeah, and I was just going to say, I think where the difference is with those two players' lives is, I think Luca is a much more crafty creative player than Kate Cunningham is. Um, you know, and I mean, yeah, I don't know. You know, that's yeah, just I think yeah, I think Luca's like Luca's more flat yeah, he's more flashy. He definitely plays with more flair. You know, K right. K just is not he's not flashy, but he just yeah. again, just makes the right pass, yeah, the right business play. Like, very business like in how yeah. he plays and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. That's no why. no he's kinda like Kendall. He's kinda like if Peyton Manning was an NBA player. Right. Like, you know, like, you know, Peyton Manning, not the the craziest arm of all time, um, but deadly accurate, always <laughs> hit the guy at the right time, knew where everyone was all the time, knew what the defense was doing all the time. Yeah. Like, like the physical attributes didn't make Peyton Manning the greatest. It was his mind 
and his accuracy. And to me, that's yeah. kind of what Kate Cunningham is as a point guard. It's just Absolutely. He, he, he makes every single pass. He makes every single read. He's never a second late on a pass or a second early on a pass or on, a, on, on pulling up on a jump shot. He knows when to find his shot. He's just he's just hard to explain. But the guy is just a really special player. Yeah, and what, what solidifies Kate Cunningham to me as number one prospect in this draft is um, I really implore people to go back and kind of really watch him play at Montverde because I think when we – sometimes we evaluate these guys in a box based off what they did, you know, you know, in 20 games, you know, in, in, in a four-month season. But, you know, there's a lot of Kate Cunningham out there of him playing – I mean, there's him playing for Team USA. He's been playing at Montverde. And he's even more special, I think, playing there than he is at Oklahoma State. And you, know, you could argue that was the worst competition. But, um, I, like, it's it's really, really impressive the things that he was able to do with a tremendous amount of talent around him. You know, like, he's a player. And just think about it theoretically, even if you don't, by, even if you don't buy the the idea that you know high school basketball is important, think about theoretically a player with Kate Cunningham's strengths and weaknesses would be more ideal to play on a team like Gonzaga than than Oklahoma State. You know, just like Jalen Suggs was afforded the ability to go to Gonzaga, and he thrived because of the amount of pieces he had around him. If Kate Cunningham was in that spot, I mean, I don't know if Gonzaga loses a game. I mean, he didn't lose a game with Jalen Suggs besides one. But they may not lose a game at all with Kate Cunningham, you know. And, I mean, Kate didn't lose a game at Montverde his last season. They were arguably the greatest high school basketball team of all time. Yeah. Playing with Scotty Barnes and Moses Moody and Daron and, Sharp. So, and important, an important note that Kate Cunningham, Kate Cunningham's team at least once did beat Baylor. <laughs> for, they did. For, for what is for what is worth. Yeah, they did um, beat Baylor on the backs of Kate Cunningham. So, so um, on just on that quickly, I know we only got a few more minutes left, but um, yeah. you – the guys you miss, I mean, Davian Mitchell not in the top five. That to me is crazy. So quickly try to yeah. explain that one. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. I'm just, you know, I know some people may think, oh, I guess what is he a shooting guard? Uh, nah, I mean, I think he's a point guard. But um, I'm not as high on Davion Mitchell. Um, you know, I think he's, he's, I mean, he may be point guard six, point guard seven in this draft. Um, not, I mean, it's not even a knock. I think he's, I think it's a very deep point guard draft. So. Uh, I think if you're drafting him at you know in the 20s, I think that that's not a that's not a crazy pick. Um, what about it? What about his game? Is 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 doesn't have leads you not to rank him as high as most people have him, which is usually at least in the top four. Right amongst the point guards. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, t- to me, I think he screams role player, which isn't necessarily bad. It's just not necessarily. A guy I'm drafting in the, especially at the point guard position, in the top, you know, in the lottery. Um, You know, I think he, I mean, defensively, there's a little bit of Marcus Smart in there, but he's not as big as Marcus Smart. I don't know if he's ever going to be as switchable. Um, You know, and he's, I mean, he's really a pest. I mean, obviously there's a lot of Beverly. I, I don't know if offensively, really, that's the real problem, is offensively if he's ever going to be, um like a startable NBA player. Yeah, uh, I know he shot well last season, but he doesn't have a history of being a real of being a shooter. So yeah, quite, yeah, it's 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 one it's one season of body of yeah, work. Yeah, one year wonder he's, when he's a top ten question. caliber guy. He, he was not yeah. that guy at any point in his career before that. Yeah, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be the question is whether or not his shooting is real or not. Um, if if he comes into summer league and he's lighting it up, then I will be well way wrong because I think <laughs> that he, that's the shooting is gonna be very 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 much a determining factor in his in his success but um i you know i'm not as trusting in it and i don't know you know his point guard skills are kind of you know his point guard instincts aren't as high to me as a guy like jared butler i i'm willing to bet on a guy like jared butler i i think now this league is a little bit more of an offense versus defense league now and i think offense yeah. wins out um to me it's like why why isn't matisse why wasn't matisse Thibel a top 10 pick or a lot or a lottery pick you know, because Matisse Thybulle is a special defensive prospect, and he can he can get drafted until twenty uh, something, and it's not, and he he's lived up to the hype as a defender. And, yeah. But nobody nobody argues that Matisse Thybulle probably shouldn't have been a lottery pick. It was no, it was just a very good pick. Um, 
the question is, it's because Davion Mitchell, I think people think can be better offensively. They think he could, some people think about the Donovan Mitchell stuff where they think about um, just his overall quickness and they think this guy can be a starting point guard in the league. But those are the questions I have. No, I understand that. And, and there are any other uh, point guards, uh, I know you said he may be six or seven. Are there any other guys that you would say is also in that? In that? Yeah, I would say right the other guy looking. that I strongly – so uh, Bones Highland was six. Um, okay. You know, I think the debate between him and Highland uh, – him and Mitchell is really close. Um, you know, obviously we talked about him a lot during our – Combine video during yeah. our March Madness video, Sleepers video. So we talked a lot about Bones Island. So yeah, the, the, the listeners, the subscribers, Fan, are, yes, are, fans of definitely fans of Bone Island on this YouTube channel for sure. Yeah, well, absolutely. And you know, you can yeah, we're definitely we're definitely both in, in part of that fan club. Um, so yeah, Bones Island in that conversation. I think Josh Giddy, um, I don't consider a point guard. So same here. Know, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you here. know, there's gonna be a lot of people that probably have already commented. You <laughs> where's don't have where's Josh, Josh Giddy? Yeah, I know. You know, yeah. and we we haven't mentioned him, but I I do not consider him a point guard. I consider him a three. So, um, you know, yeah, I couldn't put I couldn't put him on the yeah, list. So, but so, so will, stay tuned. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. You will probably <laughs> see him at some point. Yeah. Um. So that makes sense. Yeah. I I, I think that again the guys I mentioned um, earlier, Desumu, McBride, uh, Butler, and 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 Highland, I kind of moved to the two guard spot. So Jaden Springer. I, to me, not a point guard. Also, a guy I, I put into um, two as well. Yeah, he would have been, he would he would have been on the list, okay. and Giddy probably would have been on the list had we considered them point guards. I think Giddy Giddy, it would have been close between Giddy and Butler at that five spot for me. I don't think that. Uh, or yeah, Cooper, Cooper, right? Well, yeah, Cooper. Well, I said before, I think Butler would have surpassed Cooper if. if I oh had right, 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 right. I think I also had a Giddy ahead of Cooper as well. Right, I right. don't. I don't think that. Um, who was the other guy you mentioned just now? Uh, uh, Jaden Springer. Springer. I don't think he would have been in my top five point guard. So, stay tuned. We we'll do the two <laughs> guards. See if he makes that list. But uh, that's gonna do it again for this uh, ranking of the point guards. I hope you guys enjoyed. We actually had a comment who uh, uh, commented who, who wanted us to rank these positions. So, um, if I don't forgive me, I don't have your name uh, right with me. But I wanted to make sure if this is what the people wanted. We got to get the people what they want. You know. So. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, leave us a comment. Give us your top five point guards in this draft. Do you agree with our ranking? Do you disagree? Are there point guys that we didn't consider point guards that you consider point guards? Explain why in the comments. Where we'll, you know, if you've seen our comment section, we know we we are active there, so we will respond. And uh, stay tuned for more draft content. Uh, we're only about a month away from the draft, so um, plenty of other great stuff coming your way. So that's gonna do it for now. For Kendall, I'm EJ. Take it easy, guys. Peace.